but then put your excitement away. Because then here comes Regal and Danielson and Moxley and Kingston and Santana and Ortiz and the Jericho Appreciation Society. There's five of them, right? Hager and Mac Daddy Daddy Mac and uh, Garcia and the other 2.0 fellow and Julio. And Julio. So the baby faces are in the ring. The Jericho appreciators are on the stage. And this took forever. And this killed the show. Oh, yeah. And Jericho, he blames Regal for the attack on them. And then he started talking to Regal. And they're trying to make the pointed comments. He, he called Regal a world-class addict. He's fired from everywhere. He's weaseled his way into AEW on the backs of his protégés. And he knocked Kingston, and he knocked Danielson. And here's the... They all just stand there in the ring and listen politely while the heel is... It, it's, it's one thing if you're going back and forth for a few minutes, and and there's the ability to speak back and forth without throwing the other guy off, right? I've done a few of those. Lawler was a master at it. You have an argument with somebody, the other person doesn't stand there for three, four, five minutes and let you just vent your spleen. It's back and forth. The problem becomes when you have guys that get rattled and or lose their place, and there wasn't a great narrative in this to begin with. But the baby faces listen, even Moxley, a polite listener while Jericho tears him apart that went forever. And then Regal, and I love William Regal. And but he's not being, I don't think, used to the best of his abilities here. But he responded and he's it took him a while, but he said, for 21 years, what's kept him going every night that he was anywhere Jericho was, he would go sneak in Jericho's bag, get his toothbrush, and shove it up his ass. <sighs> so, meanwhile, Jericho then challenges them to a football field fuckery match. And Moxley immediately says, I ain't doing that shit. Thank God. The first thing he's ever said I've agreed with or admired him for. And then Moxley says, well, how about you five versus us five? Now, here's the thing. I counted the people involved. Counting Regal, there was six in the ring, but where was Yuta? Yuta was nowhere to be found. So if Yuta's gone, then they've got a five-man team, but if Yuta's still there, then somebody's got to be the odd person out because Regal ain't wrestling. So the, he, the baby faces have the heels outnumbered in this instance. But Jericho says, okay... But he doesn't mind taking that match because all the baby faces hate each other and they probably won't be able to get along. And I had just written in block print, capital letters, this will not end when Eddie Kingston said, okay, let's hurry this up. <laughs> I got to think a floor director was in a corner somewhere screaming at somebody in the ring, please, somebody shut this motherfucker up. They knew how bad it was. They knew how bad it was in the moment. So Eddie says, get in the ring and fight, bitches. And then Jericho and the appreciators walk off. And then Kingston and Danielson, apropos of nothing, start shoving each other. Except the thing with Kingston went toward like he was going to get out of the ring and Danielson's there and Danielson just holds him back like, no, don't do that. Well, shove, shove. So what was this thing? 15, 20 minutes? It went forever. It went forever, and too many of the Chris Jericho segments do because Tony Khan is willing to indulge in all of Chris Jericho's bad wrestling ideas. It's one of Tony Khan's biggest faults as a booker, his inability to stop Chris Jericho from ruining shows with bad segments that fit in on Raw 10 years ago. This was bad. It was hokey. The big laugh I had was when Jericho points out, he goes, I burned your face, Eddie Kingston. And you couldn't take care of your family. And then they show Kingston. There's no burn mark. There's yeah, nothing. Yeah, this, the video showed that he set fire to the top of Kingston's head. Unless Kingston was grooming a comb over, there was no fucking problem. Every time they showed Kingston, he was shrugging or looking bored. Kingston was all of us. 
during this segment. <laughs> Jericho and his guys are just doing bad material, and it's lame, and the toothbrush thing is stupid. He's talking about Regal not being used to the best of his ability. Brian Danielson's a fucking neon That's sign right. standing yes. there, saying nothing, doing nothing. He didn't even speak. And Moxley's always ridiculous because he's, it's always just... It just never feels real from him, for me. As soon as he gets on the mic, it just always feels so contrived. And now at least they're putting them all in one big thing together so they could all share Jericho's bad ideas together. But this was terrible, and it didn't just kill the show to people who care about good quality of wrestling. It killed the show to the viewers, too, because... Well, now, hold on, (laughs) because there may be a second shooter. (laughs) (laughs) Are you saying it's not Chris Jericho? Have we we checked the grassy knoll? Uh, 